pumpkins welcome back to the house beyond the hedge today we are going to be doing a wrap-up video for the fox and wood fall festival readathon as well as a little bit of a book haul from one of my favorite bookstores big story that i went to in the last readathon video so i will show you the books i got from there and we'll talk about the books i read for the readathon and what i thought about them so grab some delicious pastries grab a little cup of tea don't worry, I'll wait, and then meet me back here and we will get started. Okay, well, I hope you're ready. I know I am. I've got my little fox mug for the Fox and Woodfall Festival. This mug is really cute, but not the most practical. As you can see, the handle is like you could fit one finger in there, so... I don't use it a ton to actually drink out of, but I thought for this video it was perfect, so I'm going to go for it, even though it's kind of hard to hold. And then the donuts that I have are apple cider donuts from a local place here in town, and they are amazing. It's just a special they're doing right now. It's not a donut place. It's actually a breakfast burrito cart, but they have these right now for the fall, and they are so good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, so now that I've had a bite of my donut for sustenance, let's get started. So if you watched my last video, you know that I participated in the Patreon readathon for Alexandra Roslin's channel. If you're into booktube, I highly recommend her YouTube channel. I will link it down below. You can go check it out if you want. But she recently started a Patreon, and as one of the tiers, she held a readathon. So you can watch my last video for the whole information on the readathon, what the different categories were and everything. Um, but this video is going to be about what books I read and what I thought about them. And then at the end, I'm going to do a book haul. So let's start with what books I read. This is them. There were actually five prompts, but I started the readathon a little late. So in order to finish by the end date, which I didn't really need to do, plenty of people read through into the weekend, but I had other stuff to do the weekend, so I just wanted to finish all the prompts. So actually I counted one book for two of the different prompts. So I only read four books, even though there were five prompts. Okay, so the first book that I read was The Ravens by Cass Morgan and Danielle Page. And this book was to fulfill the prompt that was about secret societies. So essentially this book is about a sorority at a college that is secretly a coven of witches that just uses the sorority as a cover-up basically so i thought that was secret society enough they're not really a society but i think their coven you know and they're using the sorority as the cover-up so it's kind of like a secret society so i counted it and basically the book is from the point of view of two different characters so one of the characters has just gotten into the college. It's her first year. She doesn't know that she's a witch until she rushes the sorority and finds out everything that's going on. And then the other girl is uh, an upperclassman and has been in the sorority. She comes from like a long family of witches. So she's known she's a witch the whole time. And they're both sort of navigating this situation where somebody seems to be targeting the witches in the coven and some bad things are happening and they have to figure out what's going on who's doing it so you see it from both perspectives from the two girls so it's really interesting i liked it quite a bit i'm not that great at ratings i know most like booktube especially people you know use the five star rating if i was gonna rate this it would probably be in the four to five stars i, I think maybe it wasn't like a total five star for me but definitely like four four and a half for sure there's a you know some danger there's a mystery kind of they're trying to figure out who is doing these things oh and one of the girls gets kidnapped so they're trying to figure out what happened to her and get her back so it's kind of a fun adventure it's about witches which i love books about witches and it's kind of got that dark academia secret society vibes too so all great for october november this sort of season i would recommend picking this up if that sounds like something that you'd be into so next i read the very secret society of irregular witches by sangu mandana if you watch my previous video i was trying to decide between this and the first chronologically first alice hoffman practical magic series book and i decided to go with this one partly because this is also the book club book for alexandra roslin's patreon and I wanted to read it for that as well. So I decided might as well just make it happen for both. And then the other thing was 
the Practical Magic series, I feel like if I started reading that, I would want to read all the books. So I didn't want to start that and read the first one and then be in the middle of this readathon and I have to go off and read books for other prompts when really I just want to read the next book in the series. So I decided to save that one. I'm going to do that at another time and I decided to read this. I really enjoyed this one. It is also about witches, very different than the last one. This one is a little more lighthearted. The story is really a lot about like accepting who you are and just, you know, being yourself and just like a really big theme of inclusivity. So basically this witch who is a real witch but she's not supposed to tell anyone she's a witch. All the witches don't even hang out together really, except at these specific meetings they go to because they're worried that it will draw attention. So they're not really allowed to be friends or really hang around each other a lot. But she makes these videos where she pretends to be a witch in the video so that she can just do witchy stuff in public, even though the cover of it is that, you know, no one who watches them really thinks she's a real witch, so it's okay. But then she gets this message from this family that's like, we need you to come here and help us train these girls um, that we are in care of and they are witches. <laughs> and she's like, I don't know about that because I'm not even a real witch, you know? But anyway, she goes, she meets the girls, she meets the family. It's kind of like a chosen family more than an actual related to each other family. So there's a bunch of different members. There's the girls, which none of the girls are related either. They're all witches, but they're not sisters by birth. And then there's the other people that live in the house. So there's like a librarian, archivist for the house. There's the housekeeper, an older couple that one of them's the gardener and one of them lives there because he's married to the gardener. I don't think he has a job at the house. He's just married the other guy and then moved in, I guess, if I'm remembering that correctly. But they all live in this house together and the owner of the actual house isn't there. She's gone a lot because she is an archeologist, anthropologist, um, or both of those things. And so she's gone a lot. You don't meet her at all, but it's just the rest of these people have created this family. So the idea is all of these different people who, you know, come from all these different backgrounds, that they've created this family and it's really lovely and it's a really enjoyable read. I would probably give this also like a four and a half star. One of the main reasons why I wouldn't give it a five star is because there is a romance. It's between the main character and the librarian at the house. And it's fine. It's it's cute. Like it's a, what, what they call it, grumpy sunshine trope. So he's very, you know, serious and grouchy and he doesn't want to be around people, which I can relate to as an introvert. So I, I understand where he's coming from there, but she's very much like outgoing and bubbly. That sunshine trope. So the actual relationship is cute. I don't mind that at all. But there is a scene towards the very end. There's like a spicy, little bit of a spicy sex scene. And I also don't mind that either. It's not really why I pick up books. I also don't really care that much about romance generally. So that's not really why I pick up books either. But so many books have it. I'm not going to like avoid a book because it has romance because then I wouldn't be able to read any books. It's just not the thing that I care about the most. But I understand that it's needed often, especially to like move story along. So I'm certainly not against a, some spiciness. I read another witch book that was like a lot of spiciness. But this one, I think especially because of all the themes, representation in it and the idea of loving who you are and that kind of thing, I think it would be really good for younger readers. But then there's just like this one page that's fairly explicit. And it just seems so unnecessary when the rest of the book isn't that. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just one short scene, which in some ways you could be like, well, it's only one short scene, but also why? Why does it need to be there? Like, you could just imply that they have sex. <laughs> you don't need to, you know, have one page that's like kind of explicit description when the rest of the book is not that really at all. And I think it sort of excludes then a whole group of readers that would maybe really learn something from reading this or really enjoy it or appreciate it because they're like younger, but also they wouldn't necessarily want to pick up a book that has like explicit sex in it or even adults that aren't into that, you know, like I don't mind it, but there's probably some adults that 
don't really want to read that, in which case one page of this book essentially kind of ruins the whole book for them. So I feel like I'm reading more and more books with kind of this spicy romance stuff, which I feel like is becoming more and more common. And I'm just worried that now authors feel like maybe they have to put that in to have it be a draw because it's like become a more popular thing outside of just like romance novels. So I worry a little about that. I don't want every author to just be putting a spicy scene in just for the sake of having a spicy scene because they're like, oh, that's what readers want, you know? If it doesn't make sense for the story, you probably don't really need it. Anyway, <laughs> that's a little bit of a rant. It's just my personal opinion about that. So I would probably give it four and a half stars because I just think there was some stuff like that that wasn't really needed. But the rest of the book is delightful and I would definitely recommend it. That was for the prompt was read something with magic or witches, I think. And then the next one that I read is called The Gathering Dark, which is edited by Tori Bovolino. It's an anthology of folk horror, so it's short stories. And I picked this one up earlier this season because I saw someone post about it on Instagram. And first of all, I was just smitten with the cover because dang girl, she purdy. And also I thought it'd be a perfect book to read for spooky season. I was a little worried that it might be too scary because I get scared easily, <laughs> but actually it was the perfect amount of spooky season scariness. Very atmospheric, I think is the right word. All the stories just gave you that little bit of dread feeling, you know, just a little off-putting, but not terrifying. I thought it was the perfect, perfect level of scariness for me for this season. And the stories were all really interesting and, you know, about different themes. Like a lot of them were multiple layers of like the obvious, horror element, but then underneath a lot of them were like the everyday horrors of regular life kind of, and I thought that was really well done. It says on the back that it's featuring stories from New York Times bestselling and critically acclaimed authors, and it has a list of the authors on the back, and some of them I know have written other popular books. I'll just read them, and then some of them you might recognize from other books. Erica Waters, Chloe Gong, Tori Bovolino, Hannah Witten, Allison Saft, Olivia Chada, Courtney Gould, Aiden Polidoros, Alex Brown, and Shakira Toussaint. So those are all the authors of all the different stories. I think there might be some in there that you'll recognize. Uh, there's some other sort of popular books that uh, some of these authors have written. And I would definitely give this one a five stars. I thought it was really, really good. Really well done, perfect if you want slightly scary thing to read in the evening. Honestly, just to have it on your shelf is worth it because it's a looker. Definitely recommend this. I'm not gonna get too much into like the individual stories because I'm there's multiple, you know, it's short stories, so I'm not gonna tell you the plot of every story, but just read it. Trust me, you won't regret it. So that one was for, okay, now I can't even remember the prompts and I am using my phone to record this, so I can't look them up. That one was like a, I think horror themed book, like a scary book, but also I decided to count it for the next prompt, which was reading a book with monsters because there's definitely some monsters in that book. And like I said, I was trying to finish by a certain day. So I just used that one for the third and the fourth prompt. So then for the fifth prompt, which is uh, about ghosts, I chose The Girl in White by Lindsay Curie. This one has been highly recommended. I said this on my last video by Desi from Darling Desi's channel. I know Lexi, whose readathon on this was, has talked about it too. I've just seen a lot of people talking about it and saying good things. So I decided to pick it up. It is a middle grade and it's about this girl who has moved to this town. And the town is basically one of those towns that goes all out for Halloween. They have lo their local legends and ghost stories. But then the main girl has sort of been haunted by this ghost since she moved there. And it's like getting scarier and scarier. And then her and her friends, one of which also can see the ghost, they find out, they sort of become friends. They realize that the ghost is trying to tell them something. And I don't want to say too much because like, I don't want to spoil it. But you know, they definitely, they sort of learn a lesson. <laughs> the whole town kind of learns a lesson, but it's really well done. I think it's just the right amount of spooky for a middle grade book. Like there's definitely some creepy stuff in there, but it's not too scary, you know, for, for that age group, I don't think, or for me. <laughs> 
as an adult. <laughs> I would definitely give this one a five stars as well. It's set during Halloween, so it's just the best to read in October. It's, it's got ghosts, it's set at Halloween, the town goes all out, so there's just like descriptions of decorations and the feeling in the air and everything, and it's just, just perfect. I think this is definitely a reread for me, like I probably would read this again next year during October because it just has that perfect atmosphere and also just really enjoyable. So that was all the books I read for the readathon. I had a really good time. It was so much fun to be in the Discord for the readathon, for the Patreon, and just be able to chat with everyone else that was doing the readathon, hear what people thought. I got some great recommendations for other books that I've now added to my TBR list. So I would highly recommend that. If you have creators that you really love and they have a Patreon, like seriously consider doing it. It really helps them continue to create awesome content. And usually there's tiers that are, you know, $3 a month or $5 a month. Not only are you supporting them and it helps them bring you more cool stuff, you also get extra fun things. Like this readathon was so fun and I loved it. <laughs> And I it wouldn't have had that if I hadn't been part of the Patreon. So yeah, I just recommend checking it out if you have content creators that you really like, that have Patreons, go there, like look at the tiers, see what you get. Or if you just wanna donate like a dollar, sometimes they just have like dollar a month tiers if you just wanna support them. And it's just fun and you get to be like a part of something, you know? which is cool. Okay, so next uh, we're going to do a little bit of a book haul. In my last video, when I did sort of the vlog, I went to Big Story, which is one of the great local bookshops here. I went there because I specifically was looking for some books that would maybe fit the monsters prompt since I didn't really have anything in mind that I wanted to do for that. But of course I could not get in and out of there without buying more things. So I'm just gonna show you what I got. So the first book that I got was one that I kind of had in mind and luckily they had it. And this was actually what I was gonna read before I combined the Monsters Prompt in with the Gathering Dark book. And that is The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. This uh, edition is actually that plus other tales of terror. So it has some other short stories also by Robert Louis Stevenson in there, but I bought it specifically for Jekyll and Hyde. So that was gonna be my monster story then needed to condense it a little bit. So I skipped this one, but I do still really want to read it. I have a special affinity for Jekyll and Hyde because in high school, my high school did Jekyll and Hyde the musical as our senior musical for my senior year. I wasn't in it because I am not very musical, but a lot of my friends were in it and I loved it. And I still love that musical a lot. I listen to it, especially in October every year because it's kind of got that, you know, Halloween vibes, but I've never actually read the story. So I still really want to read this. I didn't do it for the readathon, but I'm still glad that I bought this because I do want to read the story at some point. Okay, the next thing that I got, which kind of falls into the monsters category, but also I just thought it sounded really interesting. And also when you kind of find unique books at bookstores that have like used books, I always like to pick them up because you never know when you might see that book again. I mean, I guess you could maybe find it on Amazon, but I always like to get it at a local bookstore if I just see something cool there. And it is called The Werewolf Delusion by Ian Woodward. Look at that cover. So I'm pretty sure this is from like the 70s. The Library of Congress, this says it's a second printing. So I think this one was printed in the 70s, but it says Library of Congress cataloging in publication data Woodward, Ian, 1941, The Werewolf Delusion. So maybe it was originally written in 1941? I, sometimes I don't understand how to read publication data, I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> Either way, this was printed in the 70s and it's really cool. There's illustrations, there's photos. So basically, I'm not going to read the whole flap for you, but and I haven't actually read the book yet, but essentially, so it's a nonfiction research and an investigation into the werewolf legend, the origins of what the werewolf legend, and basically any kind of evidence that could be collected as to why people believe this is a thing throughout history. So yeah, I think it looks really interesting. I think this is the kind of book that I'll maybe read a little bit of at a time, you know, because it's not a novel, it's nonfiction. So you can kind of read like a chapter here and a chapter there, but I don't actually know that much about the werewolf 
mythology and legend other than just, you know, like the common stuff. So I'm kind of excited to learn more about it. Okay, the next thing I got is not related to the readathon themes at all, but it is The Master of Middle Earth, The Fiction of J.R.R. Tolkien by Paul H. Kotcher. It's about his whole body of work essentially, so obviously people are really into Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. I am one of those people. <laughs> but he has written other things too, so uh, this really looks at everything, all of his fiction, kind of a dissection of his work. I love Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, so I'm curious to learn more about his other works. And last, but definitely not least, we have this very adorable set of the Song of Ice and Fire books. I already own all the books, but not in a collection that matches and looks so cute. And these are so small and portable. And you'll know that if you've read these books, they are kind of a pain <laughs> to read because they're enormous and it's hard to hold them. So these ones are so cute and so little, you can actually take them with you places. So if I wanted to read this on the plane, I don't have to haul a giant book that takes up my whole bag, you know what I mean? That being said, the print is pretty small, so people with bad eyesight, beware. But I just love the size. I love that they're all a matching set. Now, we all know that the last book has not come out yet, and if it ever does, <laughs> then it will not match this set anymore because this is clearly in a box. It's just the volumes that are out. However, I'm not really worried about that because let's be honest, that book is never coming out. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you're a Game of Thrones person, if you're a Song of Ice and Fire, the books person, I mean, you know that it is highly unlikely that he is gonna finish that book anytime soon and probably not before he dies, unfortunately, because it is going very slowly. <laughs> So maybe after his death, someone might finish it for him, but I'm not really worried about my set looking awkward with the last book that doesn't match because yeah, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I snagged it and it's gonna look cute on my shelf. And it's been a while since I've reread these, so who knows, maybe we will go on a Song of Ice and Fire rereading adventure sometime soon. Oh, it's a hefty boy. All right, well, that is it, I think, for this video. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please let me know if you saw any books in this video that you think you might want to read. Like I said, I enjoyed all of them to varying degrees, but I would definitely recommend all of them. So if any sounded like they are up your alley, then I would certainly say that you should pick them up. But yeah, I would love to know if any of them did sound like they were your thing and that you would want to pick them up. Or also just if you had any October books, kind of fall season scary books that you read that you really, really loved, I'd love to know so that I can add them to my list for next year's reading. And if you're watching this and you also did the read -a on what books did you read? I'd love to hear about it. I'm obviously seeing some people posting about it in the Discord, but yeah, I would love to know what your favorite book was that you read from the readathon. That's all for now, but I will hopefully be back with, I'm hoping to do a Stories and Steeps video soon because I read all witch books in October, not including these. I read a bunch of other witch books too, and I'd love to do a just all witch book stories and steeps. So I'm hoping that will be one of my next couple videos. So if that sounds like something that would interest you, then please like and subscribe so that you'll know when new videos are up and you can catch that one whenever it comes. <laughs> Not promising that it will be anytime soon, but hopefully when it comes, you'll be ready, you'll be subscribed. And as always, just remember to keep the kettle warm because I will see you next time.